Today on Beer TV Investigates, T5s, and do these cool spots, fans, and correct temperatures really result in 30% or better performance? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing, with a focus on putting them to the test, and then give away everything we test at the end. This week we're giving away a four foot, four bulb ATI fixture. There's always been a lot of discussion about how temperature impacts T5 bulb performance, and I can tell you right now, you're going to be surprised by how right this is, but some of the popularly thrown around concepts are not as accurate as everyone assumes they are. In this episode, we're going to find out three things. Which fan speed and temp produces the best performance on the ATI sun power? Is there anything to this cold spot technology where the labeled end of the bulb needs to be cooled and the rest of the bulb really doesn't matter? And finally, how running those ideal fan speeds perform against running the system with no fan or shield at all. So we're going to start this out by sharing what we think we know. First, the correct temperature does impact bulb performance, and cooling them may help performance in many cases. Second, we don't need to cool the entire bulb to achieve the desired effect, just the one end with the label which is called the cold spot. In theory, if the metal on this cap is kept at around 107 to 114 degrees, it will achieve optimum performance. Lastly, while in some instances cooling is required, Overcooling is much more likely to reduce light output than overheating. So why the ATI fixtures are so popular, they have a cooling solution with the fans up top which blow over the ballast, then ducted ports on the end which flow air directly over the cold spot, transverse the length of the bulb, then vent the air out the other side. How much airflow with a fixture like the Sun Power is dictated by the voltage applied to the AC-DC adapter and ranges from 3 to 12 volts. To get an accurate depiction of PAR, we're measuring all 66 points at a 120 gallon tank at a depth of 12 inches with the light mounted 8 inches above the tank. We burn the bulbs in 100 hours before testing and we let the bulbs run until the temp stabilized, which took between 30 and 60 minutes each. So we're going to test each setting, share the air temp as well as the average PAR at each level, starting with 3 volts, which is the slowest fan speed on the adapter. On this setting, the temp on the inlet side of the light was about 107 degrees and exiting the light 139 degrees. The reason the incoming temp was 107 degrees and not 71, which is the ambient room temp, is because the fans passed over the ballast, cooled them, and transferred a substantial amount of heat to the air entering the bulb chamber. So in this case, with the lowest fan setting of 3 volts, we're seeing an average of 234 par across all points. I'll tell you right now, this is the best performance we're going to see, and every fan speed past this one is going to decrease performance. I think this might be a surprise to some reefers. Moving to a higher fan speed with 4.5 volts, we saw an incoming temp of 103, an outgoing temp of 144. This is about 4 degrees lower entering the light fixture. Net result is a 66 point average drop 8 points to 226 par, something that's going to continue at each fan speed uptick. Moving up to 6 volts, the incoming temp drops to 96 and the outgoing to 142. This is a 7 degree drop to the incoming temp, which blows on that cold spot. And related to that, the average par drops to another 13 points to 213. Looking at the fan speed of 7.5 volts, the incoming temp blowing on that cold spot drops 4 points to 92 and the outgoing temp to 137. And accordingly, the average par drops another 12 points to 201. Now at 9 volts, the incoming temp drops to 89 and outgoing to 132. Not surprisingly, the average par drops another 9 points to 192. Now finally at the highest fan speed of 12 volts, the incoming temp drops another 2 degrees to 87 and the outgoing temp of 132 and accordingly the PAR drops 12 more points in the worst reading of the day with an average PAR of 180. End of the day, the difference between the best setting and worst setting was 54 PAR, that's potentially a 30% increase in PAR or light output by setting the fan speed on the correct setting. Now just to give you an idea how the fixture performs with the fans just turned off, the temp was 105 degrees on both sides of the lamp with an average of 203 par, which is right in the middle of the pack in terms of performance. This gives you an idea of how much of the heat is coming from the bulbs and how much is coming from the ballast. With the fans turned off, most of the heat is rising upward out of the fixture and not entering the bulb chamber. Now related to that, I would never suggest you run the fixture with the fans turned off because the ballast will burn out much faster than if they're properly cooled. 
In fact, in ATI's Tips and Troubleshooting Guide, they actually suggest that you run the fans at 9 volts. Now at 192 par, this is pretty far from ideal performance in terms of par, but properly cooled ballast will last a lot longer. So for many reefers, that might be an acceptable trade-off. One important note is we're testing the fixture in a room, which is about 71 degrees. If you're using the fixture in a hood, which traps the heat, the results will be very different. Even a fish room can be hotter, or any room in a hot summer day if the AC isn't turned on. It's all going to have a pretty large impact on the light performance. So one of the questions here is, does the cold spot really matter, or is it just the entire bulb temp that we're concerned about? In theory, the mercury vapor collects at the labeled end of the bulb and regulates the pressure to achieve the optimal performance. The most commonly referred to number for the ideal performance is an ambient temperature of 95 degrees, but a more accurate number is measuring the temp of the metal cap at the end, which should be around 107 to 114 degrees. Keep in mind that these recommendations are based on general T5 bulb technology used in a wide variety of applications, and the aquarium industry often uses these bulbs very differently. A vast majority of T5 bulbs used in other applications relies solely on passive cooling options and no fans, meaning an ambient temp of 95 degrees right around the bulb is likely to result in that gold standard temp of 107 to 114 right on the metal cap of the bulb. However, in reefing, we often put acrylic splash shields on our fixtures to protect them from salt creep and splashes. This obviously traps heat, and the best options actively cool the bulbs. And there's a big difference between actively blowing cold air on the cold spot and just letting ambient air passively cool the bulb end. This is very likely why the 107 degrees being blown on the cold spot with the fan speed at 3 volts perform the best. It's based on an active cooling solution and hit the ideal temp window for the actual end cap. So to test the importance of the cold spot technology, we flipped the bulbs around and tested them installed backwards so we're cooling the wrong end of the bulb. We tested at a fan voltage speed of 3, 6, and 12 volts. First, I think we'll share that there was absolutely a difference, and the performance is now in reverse with 12 volts and the fastest fan speed being the best with an average par of 227. Dropping the fan's voltage speed to 6, we dropped the average par to 217, and dropping the fan speed to 3 volts, the average par drops to the lowest point of 204. So there's no question the cold spot is a real thing, and focusing on cooling that spot absolutely has an effect. My guess as to why the performance flipped when the bulb orientation was changed is because while at 12 volts installed correctly cooled the bulb too much, once you flip the bulb around, the air warms as it travels the length of the bulb and gets closer to that ideal temp. We know the cold spot works really well, particularly if you can get the bulb cap on the label end of the bulb into that 107 to 114 range. However, that's at a fan speed of only 3, and ATI recommends a fan speed of 9, which reduces performance rather significantly, but presumably protects the ballast better. So one really has to wonder if installing the bulbs backward and running the fan at 12 volts is actually a better solution than the correct orientation with the fan running at 3 volts. The 227 par is only 7 off the ideal solution and the ballots at 12 volts are almost certainly going to last much longer because they're operating at a much lower temperature. Again, this is with the assumption that you're operating with the light hung over the tank with an ambient room temp of 71 degrees. So let's take one last look at this by removing the shield. There are a lot of light fixtures out there that either don't have a shield or allow you to remove it, and a whole slew of retro options which don't have fans or shields. Now with the ATI fixture, I do not recommend removing the shield because the 99% reflective reflectors are ruined very quickly by salt spray, so there's a fair warning. With no splash shield in place, we're going to look at performance with the fan off, the fan at 3 volts, and at 12 volts. Again, I would not run the ATI fixture with no fan because the ballast will likely overheat and reduce their usable lifespan. So this is just for general reference. So with no fans at all, the bulbs in the correct orientation, and the splash shield off, we have an average par of 233. Just for reference, that's exactly one single par lower than our best reading we found today. Meaning with 71 degree ambient air in the room, the bulbs are heating the air surrounding the bulbs to near the ideal temp on their own. Honestly, I don't think this should be particularly surprising since most fluorescent bulbs are designed to be operated in normal household or office temps with passive cooling. 
When we did turn on the fans at three volts, the average power drops a couple points to 231, but more or less similar performance, meaning it is possible to cool the ballast to some degree, blow that heated air on the cold spot, and maintain performance. However, when we turn the fan up to 12 volts without the shield in place, the average power drops all the way down to 196, meaning even though the fans are not actually cooling any other part of the ball than the cool spot, the power drops fairly dramatically when that spot is overcooled. So what do we learn today? Well, I think we certainly clearly demonstrated that temp matters, particularly on the one cold spot on the ball. However, all of these cooling efforts are primarily to cool the ballast properly and then vent the air trapped by the splash shield. Without the splash shield, we're probably going to see pretty solid performance at standard household temps. In the end, I think this ATI Sun Power fixture is absolutely the best cooling option out there because with proper tools like a PAR meter, you can explore different options until you find the best performance possible. However, since most reefers either don't own a PAR meter or wouldn't be willing to go through all of this trouble to find out the ideal setting, I think most of the value is really just in the highly optimized reflectors. I can't say this for sure, but I think it's very possible that even with a splash shield installed, a well-vented T5 fixture with independently and properly cooled ballast which don't blow the hot air onto the bulbs might be the set it and forget it solution with a solid ballast lifespan. We'll look for a solution that does something like that to test. If you have some thoughts on how you'd expect this approach to work or a T5 fixture design that you'd like us to test, join us over on the Reef to Reef conversation link down below. We're, of course, giving away this awesome four-foot, four-bulb ATI fixture away this week, so click on that link that just showed up to win, or head on over to the site, click Sales and Deals, and then free stuff to win. As always, if this type of reefing information is valuable to you, let us know with a quick thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because we release new reefing videos all week long. See you next Friday with another episode of BRS TV Investigates.